So what am I making today? Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by. That's right, I'm making a rustic beef stew in the cast iron Dutch oven. First thing I've got to do, got to get the coals going, and I'll show you how I'm setting up my Weber kettle to hold the Dutch oven during this cook. Let's get this lit. Now I've got an almost full chimney of charcoal here, but I'm not going to wait till the entire thing is lit where there's that sort of ash on every piece of charcoal. I want the top layer to be just almost lit because those are gonna be my backup coals for this Dutch oven cook. Okay, so here I have the Weber kettle set up for this Dutch oven cook. Now, if you'll notice, the Weber briquette holders, which help you when you're doing an indirect cook, I have inverted them. And what's gonna happen is the Dutch oven is going to sit on those, the edges of it, just above the coals beneath. I have some leftover charcoal below. That's gonna ignite and catch when I put the lit charcoal in. And you'll notice off to the side, there are some charcoal that's sitting there just ready to be added to give more charcoal if we need to. So the idea being here is that I want the Dutch oven up just slightly from the coals because one of the things that I've found, especially if you're doing it on sort of a soft surface, like in a fire pit with sand or ash, those coals tend to get a little smothered fairly quickly. This way, I'm hoping to keep that heat generated right beneath the Dutch oven, um, hopefully save on fuel so you don't need quite as much charcoal. Uh, but this is kind of an experiment. If this works, I think I'm gonna go ahead and try and build something more permanent that I can just insert in the Weber kettle that will keep the Dutch oven up. But we'll see how these uh, inverted briquette holders work. As I said before, this is a rustic beef stew very simple ingredients. I have about a three pound chuck roast that I've cut up into cubes. Try to keep them all the same size, but they're not always gonna be perfect. I've pre-seasoned those and they've been sitting for a few hours in that coating of seasoning. I'm also gonna be adding red potatoes, Mexican onions, carrots, a sliced up zucchini. For the base and the liquid in this, we're gonna be using some crushed tomatoes and some beef broth. Now all I've gotta do is wait for these coals to get ready. Coals are right about where I want them. So I'm gonna get these in here and start getting them set up for the Dutch oven. These are gonna be coals that we're gonna add later if we need to for more heat. As the coals underneath start to die out. We want a good amount of lit coals under there to build heat. I like this sort of system of where you can have coals off to the side on the other side of these briquette holders. That keeps them from igniting too fast, you know, adding too much heat to the Dutch oven. Whereas the rest of them get right in there and do their job. And then we can move them around as necessary. So let's get the Dutch oven out there. Just want to get it so the legs are between the two briquette holders. Just like that. Now I'm going to take the lid off because I want to be able to check the temperature of the bottom of the Dutch oven before I start browning the meat. Okay, so I'm gonna check the temperature in the Dutch oven here with my infrared thermometer. So you can see that. A little over 400 degrees on the surface down there. It's getting good. I'm gonna add a little oil and brown up the meat. Just adding a little bit of vegetable oil. And I know this isn't really level here, so it's gonna be a little one-sided, but we'll move stuff around. Yeah, let's get our meat in there. Just want to get it browned all around before we start adding our other ingredients. I love cooking with cast iron. Now, if you're interested in any of the items which you see me uh, use in this video, I'll put links in the description below. That way you can check them out yourself. Things like this cast iron pan, the briquette holders. I find these things useful. Um, I'd highly recommend getting a Dutch oven, cast iron, a cast iron pan. They're just so fun to cook with and people think they're hard to take care of. They really aren't. I'm going to be doing a video on how to clean and care for your cast iron. It's completely simple, very easy. One thing you always do have to be careful with cast iron is to heat good gloves. 
cast iron is so great to cook with because it gets hot and retains that heat. I'll start getting some nice color on this meat. So this is chuck roast, and chuck roast isn't the most tender cut of meat, but it is when you cook it long enough or stew it such as this. And we're going to be, overall cooking time on this is probably going to be between two to three hours. It really just depends on when everything's done and the meat is tender. Now this meat is pre-seasoned, so I don't have to add anything to this, but after we add all the other ingredients, I will be adding some very simple seasoning, salt, pepper, garlic powder. That's about it. Here's a tip if you want some quick flavor in your stew and some really bold flavor. Um, when I was younger and I would make stew and put it in the slow cooker, I would dump an entire bottle of A1 steak sauce. And man, is that good. You can add just about anything for your flavoring in a stew. The key is giving it enough time to cook down, to break down the cuts of meat so they're tender. Okay, we're gonna let this finish browning, then we're gonna add some of our liquid and vegetables. Okay, I'm gonna add my vegetables, except for the potatoes. Also gonna add my can of crushed tomatoes, a little bit of beef broth, I'm going to throw in about four bay leaves, good little shake of pepper, good shake of garlic powder, about a teaspoon of salt, and I'll stir that up again here. We got a little more liquid right now. And we'll be adding more liquid when we put our potatoes in. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead, put the lid on this, so we can build up some good heat in there. Now, you can put coals on top of the lid to do this and sort of accelerate the cooking process. I find for stew, it's really not necessary getting the heat from the bottom. That's enough usually in this. But if you want to, you want to accelerate it, definitely can put it on top, especially if you're loading this up with a lot of potatoes and things like that. So you know what? There's another advantage to being able to use your Dutch oven kind of in a kettle grill like this. You can actually treat it like it's in an oven. Control the temperature around it that way with the vents. So we're going to leave this go for about half an hour, then we're going to check it. Probably going to be adding the potatoes in that half an hour to 45 minutes. I'll bring you back. I took the kettle lid off for a second, just so you can see how much heat is generated in that cast iron pan with those coals and how much it retains. Look at that steam that's just coming out from under the lid. It's cooking really well in there. Maybe we should take a quick look. Let's take a quick look here using this lodge lid lifter. Oh yeah. Let's give it a stir. It's only been about 15 minutes. Look at that. Great smell coming off this. Right, let's get the lid back on and let this keep cooking. Okay, we're about 45 minutes in. I'm going to check this and I think we're going to add our potatoes now. Probably going to steam the lens up because it's so close, but man, that looks good. It smells great. Look at the colors. I'm going to check this now, see how we're feeling. So you can see the, the beef is not tender yet. You can actually just tell by feeling it in the spoon. It's very stiff, so it's still got at least an hour, hour and a half to go. So we're going to put the potatoes in because it'll take them probably about an hour to get cooked down with the rest of these vegetables. Ooh, looks good. And I'm going to be using red potatoes here, like I said. We're going to add some more seasoning and some more liquid. And the seasoning I'm going to be adding to the potatoes is the same thing I used on the beef. It's this uh, Dean's Natural Grill Roast and Steak Seasoning. Add some more liquid here. And I'm not worried about adding cold liquid to this. This is hot enough, it's going to come up to temperature pretty darn quick. 
Now I don't want everything totally submerged. I'd like the potatoes to be kind of poking up here because I want to give this a chance to thicken up a little. I don't want to be too much liquid. I can always add more later. So let's get our lid back on. Get our kettle lid on and keep cooking. We'll check it again probably in about half an hour. All right, we are at about the hour and 45 minute mark. And I wanna check these because it might be time to leave the lid off just a little bit to let it thicken up. So let's check. Yes. That's looking good. Let's see how our potatoes are doing. Ooh, getting soft. Not all the way, but just about there. So I'm gonna leave this off now. Let this thicken up a bit. And I think we're probably gonna be done, I don't know, another 15, 20 minutes, right around the two hour mark. Also, one of the things I wanna do right now is I wanna bring the temperature down a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is use a little ash rake to bring some of the coals out from underneath, just to lower that temperature a little bit underneath the Dutch oven. Just thin out the number of coals under there. Okay, we're gonna let that cool down just a bit and keep simmering. You can see how much that cast iron just retains that heat. There are very few coals directly underneath it. A lot of coals around, but that cast iron just really retains that heat. Let me check our potatoes again. Oh yeah, potatoes are perfect. Oh, the meat, yeah, look at that. Maybe you can see that just pulling apart right there. Look at that, jiggly. All right, I'm gonna get some of this out of here and taste it. <laughs> that looks really good and I can tell you it smells amazing. So I'm gonna eat this right now. Okay, I'm very, very, very ready to try this. You see that? It smells really, really good. Okay, here goes. I love carrots and stew. So the first thing I'm gonna get is some carrot with a piece of that meat. Let's see. Oh, wow. Mmm. Oh, man. Oh, that is so tender. Oh, just give that chuck roast some time. Makes great stew meat, great stew meat. Get a little potato now with some of that chuck roast. Mmm. Mmm. I gotta say, this actually is exceeding my expectations. I've made stew in Dutch ovens before, but this for some reason is just amazing. I think it's that, that seasoning I used on the meat first that really added a lot of initial flavor to the beef. Mmm, mmm. I'm really sorry you can't be here to try this. If you have a Dutch oven like this, a cast iron one, try making this sort of stew out on your grill or in a fire pit with charcoal or wood, oh, it is so good. There's just that sort of rustic feel and taste to that food when you cook it outdoors on charcoal or over a fire. I don't know what it is, but it's terrific. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, it sure does help. If you like these videos, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. That way you'll get notifications when I put out a new video. Thank you everybody for watching. I hope you have a great evening. I'm gonna go eat some more stew. We'll see you again soon. Oh.